today's video is probably the hardest video for me to make out of all of these videos because today's video is very personal and it's talking about why I started running. I started running all linked to living with an eating disorder and I have talked about it a little bit in the past in some interviews I've done but I really about six months ago I really actually wanted to talk about it more and open up about it. You watch TV programs like Loose Women and you, they talk about eating disorders but it's mainly aimed at women and men don't really talk about it much so I thought maybe if I can open up about it other people who got the same issues as me they can hopefully relate to it and find ways of dealing with it and I do know that other people live with it you think you're on your own with it and some of the things you do only you do but actually other people do it as well and the easiest example of that was and, and actually what brought all of this to the forefront for me it was about six months ago when Jerry played G.A.Y. Um, and it was at the rehearsals and I was sitting talking to Shirley Lewis, one of Jerry's backing singers, and um, she was talking about her daughter who now kind of makes protein shakes and ch has changed her whole life, but used to live with an eating disorder. And I started telling them about talking about my eating disorder and all the stupid things I've done over the years to avoid eating. And then the next day, when Jerry turned up for the sound check, Jerry said to me, I hope you don't mind that I was eavesdropping your conversation, but it was quite interesting to hear you say what you said because everything you've done, I've done. And it was that one line, everything you've done, I've done, that made me, made me realize, actually, I do need to talk about this. I need to say more about what I've lived with because if I can talk about it, hopefully other men will talk about it. I was trying to think when all this started. I mean, I've lived with this for so many years now. And at little points, I think in my life, could this have triggered it? I mean, I think back when I was like 13, 14 years of age, and we, it was a family holiday. Well, it was my dad and my brothers, because my parents split up when I was very young. We were in Dorset, staying on a farm. And I remember my dad saying to me one day, just be careful what you eat you know, because you don't want to be putting on weight. And he did it nicely, or and it wasn't like horrible or anything like that. It was a, a nice comment, but it was kind of like, and I think even maybe he had noticed that I do binge eat. I think, you know, I think it was one of the, we were on a farm and it's kind of like a, a buffet and, you know, the eyes are bigger than the belly kind of thing. It was like, grab everything, leave something for someone else. I don't think so. Um, so I think maybe he spotted something and he tried to tell me, but nicely. Um, and I think one of the other times that really sticks in my mind, I must have been about 16, 17 years of age, and I was working as an assistant stage manager, and I'd gone to buy some tracksuit bottoms for work. And I remember being in the changing room and trying them on, and looking in the mirror, and you know when you lose your puppy fat, and you don't actually know you've lost it, it's just gone. So I must have just lost my pup puppy fat. And... I looked in the mirror and I went, oh my God, you're really skinny. And I, and I kind of saw myself and went, oh my God, I really like the way I look. And, and, it, and for me, I think that could have been a point where that is how I want to look. That is the point, that, that is the way, that is why, how I want to be. And that's, I think, in the way where I set that guideline, it was like, that's the size trousers I'm going to wear. You know, and, and it, I remember like, being so happy with my body that I would wear a tight t-shirt because I wanted to show, oh look, I'm slim. Um, but obviously as you get older, your metabolism changes. So what you suddenly think you can eat, you can't anymore. So you may be able to go and have a burger and you know, have Coca-Cola and as much chocolate as you like. But at a certain age suddenly, and it's not a set point in your life, but it changes and suddenly you realise, you look one day and go, hang on, what happened to that skinny guy that I want to be? And I think that's from the point that I think, okay, what am I going to do? And I said, and you try and stop yourself from eating and it doesn't work. And that's when you start looking for the alternatives and it's those alternatives that take you down that downhill route. Living with an eating disorder controls your life. You try and hide what you do from others and you do things in your life to control maybe what you're eating. I wish I could label it. I wish I could say, oh, it's anorexia or bulimia. And I don't believe I have either of those. I think my eating disorder 
it's different from others. I, I don't know if I can label it or whether I need to label it. I just know it's an eating disorder, but it does control my life. I started running because of my eating disorder. It was all about burning calories. I would only eat on days before a run. So I know, for example, if uh, my long run is a Wednesday, I can eat on Tuesday because I'll burn my calories on a Wednesday. And it still, even today, controls my life. A good example of that would be a friend's birthday a couple of weeks ago. He had planned a dinner on the Wednesday and I'm trying to persuade everybody to move it to the Tuesday because my run day is a Wednesday. If I go out for dinner on the Wednesday night, I'm not running on the Thursday. So it does control your life. It controls things that I do. For example, I weigh myself three times a day. So when I get up in the morning, I weigh myself. In my head, your lowest weight of the day is when you first get up. So I weigh myself and I think, okay, that's a good weight. But if it's not the weight I want to be in my head, that controls what I may eat that day. Um, I weigh myself after a bath or a shower. I weigh myself last thing at night before I go to bed. So weighing myself is really important because in my head, I need to be a certain weight. Um, other things, for example, I wear a belt. I, actually, I've got it here. So when I wear jeans or something, so I wear this belt and this belt, I have to be on that belt buckle number there. And if I put a pair of jeans on and I put the belt on and I get into it comfortably, I'm kind of happy. But if, it, if it's a little bit loose, I'm even happier. But if I'm struggling to get it that, that controls what side my waist should be. And it, I, you know, I've had this belt for years. I will not wear a different belt. This is all about not what I'm wearing. I don't care what I wear, this belt has to go with it. But more recently, I've kind of given up wearing, and it sounds stupid, jeans or trousers, because I feel more comfortable in maybe like tracksuit bottoms or something more elasticated. I don't feel fat in those. So that now controls what I wear, because I feel better in myself. I don't think, oh, hang on, I feel fat. When I, what I wear, for example, even now, but I always wear two T-shirts. So one T-shirt kind of covers my stomach and the other, kind of covers what I think could be fat. But the, so these are all little controlling things in my life. To me, food is the enemy. And I know that if you, if you went to a counsellor, they would try and want to change that. Um, but that's the way I see food. I see it as the enemy. Um, it's what would put weight on. And food for me is only only able to be had if I know I'm going to burn the calories off the next day. Running is so important to me because that gives me the chance to eat. Um, and I can't eat, okay, the best way of saying this is I, I can't do a weekly shop. So to me, if there's food in the flat, I will eat it. Um, so if I did a weekly shop, I would eat it in a night doesn't matter how much it's there I would keep getting up and picking at it and picking at it and so it what what so I can't I have to buy when I want to eat otherwise I'll binge eat I can't have anything in the flat unless I, I know I'm going to eat it and a prime example um, and, and you'll probably laugh at this but this is how, something I have to live with but there was one night there was a Cornetto in the freezer and during the night I had got out of bed and I had eaten the Cornetto in bed. I woke up the next morning, I had no idea I'd eaten it. The only way I knew was because the wrapper and bits of chocolate were all over the pillow. So that the only way I'd known, but it was there, so it got eaten. But it, it, if I overbuy food, I'm very likely to throw it in the bin. But I can't just throw it in the bin because I would get up during the night and you'd go through the bins and still eat it. So. And if you've ever been hit by a leg of lamb on the old Compton Street, this will probably be my fault. So I won't throw food away in the bin if I have it in the flat. I will literally have to throw it out the window <laughs> because that is the only way it will stop me from eating it. Um, I have a freezer in my flat, but things like bagels that I may need for carb loading, I won't keep in my freezer. I would keep it down in GAY bar because I live above the bar. But they're kept in a freezer downstairs that I can't access unless I actually need to go and get them. Otherwise, I would go up and get them, but the venue's alarmed during the night, so it stops me from actually being able to go and get them. I mean, I think the worst time was one Christmas. I remember having being here 
at home at Christmas, and you know how everybody buys loads of food, food over Christmas. I had to, you know, everything shut on Christmas Day, so I bought loads of food, and I'm scoffing it all on like Christmas Eve, and I'm like getting angry with myself because I'm thinking, you're eating too much. And literally, I had cooked this leg of lamb, and uh, a duck rolls, and no, I know they don't go. And I, about, must have been about 11 p.m. at night, and I'm thinking, what the hell am I gonna do? I don't want this food in the flat. I got really frustrated, and I literally threw it out onto the street, into the middle of the road, because it was the only place I knew that I wouldn't eat it. And during the night, I actually got up and went to look for it. I mean, that's how bad it gets, and luckily, somebody obviously had picked it up and taken it away but you it's if you know it's there wherever it may be even on the middle of the road you will go and find it you will go and look for it so you can't even just throw it away in a bin because you will go through your own bins to find it this is the hardest bit to talk about because i don't want to give anybody ideas of things that they can do and i really would say don't do this it really screws your life up um, but I have done some really stupid things to avoid food. Um, one of the worst was buying like some speed and literally putting it into tissue and then literally, I'd set my alarm half an hour before I get up, take a speed bomb and then go back to sleep for half an hour Then when you wake up your mouth is so dry and you don't want to eat. And literally what I would do all day long is every time I would feel hungry again, I'd take another speed bomb. And it's just the most ridiculous thing. I dropped down to, I mean this originally started back, and I, I actually know when it started, this started back when the Spice Girls did GAY. I knew that because there was a photo of me with the Spice Girls backstage. And I, at that point, I think I must be my lowest weight, I dropped to six stone. But to me, that looked amazing then. Now when I look back at it, I can see that I, it, that's when I must have got to my all point, my lowest point. But I literally, I was scared and I would do speed bombs six days a week and then on a Sunday, which would be my day off, I would binge eat and then take, at the end of the day, laxative to clear it all out and then back to speed bombs. It was really weird because one, I mean, it, it, it creates, uh, obviously it creates huge depression. I mean, I mean, my mood swings were atrocious, and you know, and you take it out of people at work, and I, God knows what I was like then, and people must, you know, people like who used to work for me back then must be looking at going, mm, you were a nightmare, and I'm, I'm, you know what, I know I was, but you can't control it, even when you lose it with someone. I mean, now if you look back at it now, if if I did that to someone now, that would be bullying, but you can't control it. You you literally the smallest thing would make you just explode on someone. And you think to yourself, and you, and you think, why am, I, why am I losing it? And you, you, you have no idea why, and you just don't fit. And it was really weird, one morning, I just woke up and I go, I don't want to do this anymore. I just don't want to take this anymore. I just don't want to do it. And I just stopped. But the moment I stopped, you can, that means you're hungry, so you want to eat. So I'm feeling like food, I don't want to put weight, so what do I do? So then I started ordering online, like kind of diet pills. You think, there was a chemist in Covent Garden, and, you, and I thought, well, I'm buying from a chemist, so it's not an illegal substance, it's a legal substance, I'm buying it over the shelf. But actually, when you look at the ingredients, it's kind of got some form of speed in it. And it's fine for a while, and suddenly you realise those mood swings are starting again, You're, and it, it's getting, and for a while I was living, it dried your mouth, and I was living on, orange calippos and, and diet pills. And literally I'd set my alarm every three hours, take two diet pills, mouth dry, have a calippo. Oh, I'm happy that, keeping my weight down. Um, so I was looking for like different things to do to not eat. Living with an eating disorder, and I think, I think that's how I, I look at it now, I live with it. Um, I haven't dealt with it, I just live with it. And it completely screws up your, it, it screws up your social life slightly because you choose the days that you want to go out and eat. It screws up your private life as well. Um, you know, 
I was in a long-term relationship for seven years and it, that ended because of me. It, you know, one of the reasons it ended was because as he started putting on weight and, you know, he was happy with what he looked like, but I wasn't. You know, it's weird. I go for really skinny guys and one of the reasons I go for skinny guys, they're usually what I want to look like. That's what I want my body to be look like. So when he started putting on weight, I didn't find him attractive anymore and it, it was really weird and again I can look back at it and I didn't see it like that then but I look I now know I was putting on my issues with body weight onto him so it was I mean which is really unfair and a horrible thing to do but I didn't know it's so easy to look back at what you've done and not at the time you don't realize what you're doing until you look back at it but I now accept that, you know, that him putting on weight, he was happy. It, you know, he was happy with who he was. He was happy with his body. I couldn't deal with him putting on weight because it went against, it was more about me. I didn't want to put the weight on. I was worried he was putting it on. He was eating more. So would I start eating more? So our relationship kind of fell apart because of my issues with food, not with his. Um, and even now, it's like really hard when I, I mean, like it's, it's kind of strange. I mean, I've been on holiday recently, and it's weird going on the beach by a pool, going swimming, training for swim surfing time. I don't have an issue with swimming and people seeing me, but when I'm with certain people, I have it's a huge issue, especially if I meet someone new or the first time I sleep with someone. I absolutely panic when, when, when we're in bed. You know, when that first time you're in bed and you're kind of touching each other and you and and when they're touching me, I'm in my head, I'm thinking to myself, what are they thinking? Are they like, oh my God, he's fat? Or like, they touch a certain part and go, oh, that's not nice. And you know, the first time I sleep with someone, I don't actually really enjoy it. I kind of want to sleep with someone immediately to, not like, oh, because I'm horny or whatever, I want to get into bed. I actually want to get it out of the way. I want them to like, you know, and I kind of like, it's really weird even after sex, kind of walk around like to the bathroom and back naked. And I want them to see me because I'm wanting to know if they're gonna, to me, I want them to see me naked so that they can go, uh, hopefully like me, but so that they'll see me again. But I, I kind of need to get that out of the way. You know, I need to, you know, I need to know, you know, and it, it, it's in my head, I'm, all I'm thinking on that first night is, what are they thinking? Is there a conclusion to this? I don't know. Um, it's weird, when Jerry and I talked about it, Jerry recommended some groups that she thought I should go to. And I'm going to be honest, um, at the time I went, yeah, I'm going to do it. Six months on, I haven't. Do I want to go and get counselling? Probably not. Do I want to open up a can of worms of issues in my life? No. I think it's really weird because I talk to people like Fat Tony, who's dealt with different addictions, and he's now, you know, he's, uh, he sees me in the street and he'll go to me, you, you, you need counselling. <laughs> like, oh, you don't even know my issues. Uh, but, <laughs> but I think he says it to everybody. Um, and he's right, probably I do. But I think to go and get counselling, and this is just in my head, you need to be in that right place to go and do it. And I don't think I, I'm at that stage. So for me, I think now I'm at the stage where I'm living with an eating disorder and I try and live a little bit healthier than I've ever done before, which comes into what this video is all about. It's about, for me, running. So the way I live my life now, and there's gonna be people watching this going, oh my God, this guy needs help. I'm, you know, everything is about calorie intake. I'm obsessed with calories. Um, it's about what I burn and what I eat. So my eating, my main eating days will be days before a run. So for me, obviously with London Marathon training, I would do short runs on a Friday, Sunday, and a Monday. And then my long training day will be on the Wednesday and those are the day befores and the mornings are when I eat but today obviously I did a long run and 
I would try and avoid not eating tonight because after I did my long run, I weighed myself. I'm happy with my weight. I don't want to spoil that weight. So I would, I will eat something, don't get me wrong, but I will, it'll be something like maybe, a, and I know this is going to sound awful because it's more calories than, than the meal, but I'll probably just eat a bar of chocolate rather than a full meal. To me, eating something less, smaller, rather than eating a whole meal, which could be the same calorie intake, doesn't work. I need the smaller thing, like a bar of chocolate, um, rather than a bigger meal, even though it probably makes no sense to anyone else. It makes sense in my head. Um, but then I'll have another meal Thursday, the night because I know I'm going to run Friday so it's it everything is controlled by my running the problem I obviously get is and we'll talk about it in a later video when it comes to carb loading for a lot of people on marathon training the hardest bit is all the long runs and their favorite part is four days of non-stop carb loading eating five meals a day leading up to the marathon and for me that's the worst part that four days of non-stop carb loading and I'm wearing myself, I'm wearing myself non-stop leading up and then to the marathon itself and then marathon morning I weigh myself thinking please, please, please lose that weight on the marathon and then you go and run the London Marathon and the first thing I do when I get back is get on that scales and have a look and go, hmm, you lost three pounds, you should have lost six. Uh, but that's the way I look at it. So it's all about eating, running, burning off the calories, hopefully getting the weight to the weight I want to be. So I think the point of this video, if I could summarize is that, have I sorted my issues out? No. Am I healthier than I was a few years ago? Yes. Is this the ideal situation? No. But I think it's important for more men to stand up and talk about eating disorders. Um, I don't think anything on this video is something that anyone else should follow because I don't think what I'm doing is the right thing cause it, but it works for me at the moment and hopefully in time I'll take another step forward and I'll, I'll deal with it in another way but this is the way I'm dealing with it now so my only advice would be to anyone else who's watching this and going you know I relate to this is don't follow me but try and find a healthy way of dealing with it but do what's right for you. I think what I do is right for me right now, and I'm happier with that than what I've done in the past. So I think you need to find what's right for you and hopefully try and make that work. So that's all I can say really on it. Um, um, I don't know, I really wanna end with something kind of like, I'm trying to think of the word, I wanna end with something positive. <laughs> but I can't think of anything. But I just wanted people to know what I'm going through and I hope it will help other people. And I hope people will comment on this and hopefully people will find a way of dealing with it or at least relate to it so eventually they can deal with it.